the stubs having a cast applied to manage very proximal metatarsal fractures. And the first thing we're going to do is apply some stirrups. And so we'll just have some tape. We're taking the worst of the sticky out of. And I'm going to have dorsal and palmar stirrups here. So there's our palmar one. And there's our dorsal one. And I'm just using a little bit of bandage wrapper just so the tape doesn't stick to itself because that's a bit of a nightmare when that happens. Okay. And we're going to give you some five centimeter padded bandage. Perhaps to get started. Can you just put a finger in front of the stifle there just to stop him flex off? percent overlap as we work our way up the leg. I'm going to try and keep this at a standing angle. When you get to the heart you can just do a bit of a tear in that the top and at the bottom and it just helps the padding sort of come around the corner. We're going to come about 50% to two thirds of the way up the tibia leave enough room at the top so that he can flex his stifle and then work back down the leg again. Again, a 50% overlap. Turn there. Turn there. So that essentially gives us four layers of padding. I'm quite happy with in this dog. So that's us for that. Okay, and then with uh, this style of bandage, because I want to apply this quite tightly, but I don't want to run the risk of any tourniquet effect, I use a slightly wider bandage. So I use five centimeter for the foam. I'm using seven and a half for this. If we used five centimeter here, in theory, at least, there's an increased risk of having a tourniquet effect. And we do want to be quite firm with this. The whole point of supporting the fractures is that the bandage is tight and firm. And again, I'm just going to stick that just to allow that to form around the point of the hock a little bit better. Leave a bit of foam at the top. Come back down the leg. I'm not going to bother snipping this, that's actually conforming just fine. We'll put a nick in that in a minute. So we don't like knots when we're doing a cast because they're going to create areas of pressure so we're just going to leave some little bit of tape. And this is the point at which apply these stirrups. So there's our dorsal stirrup, twist right at the base, good bit of firm proximal pressure. It starts to reveal those central toes and that's where we want this bandage to stay so we can just see and feel those central toes. Do you have a scalpel blade to hand? Okay. Next thing we'll do here is get a scalpel blade. Fifty. Sorry? Fifty. Perfect. Um, the seven and a half centimetre casting material there, sorry, is only five centimetre. Uh, another one's going to come in the order I put it in with that stuff there. I didn't actually look at anything. So that's just a little nick over the point of the hock. Um, 
just because that's a pressure point where we might develop a pressure sore. Yes, Perfect, thank you. So now we're going to get the casting material. And we're soaking that just in some lukewarm water. So the hotter this is, as I understand it, the quicker this will go up. You don't want it to go up too quickly. And again, we don't want that too wet because we don't want us to be soaking the bandage. Right, now, we want to make sure that this isn't going to dig into the toes when he extends. We want the bandage to be touching the floor when he weight bears, but we want to be able to see those toes. So they're the sort of factors we're considering when we're deciding what level to start this. And then again, we're just going to work our way up the leg with 50% overlap. And we're not applying any tension to this at all. the cast just as a bit of padding so it's not digging into the leg and then we start working our way back down the leg again so again each run up or down the leg with 50% overlap gives us two layers so a run up and a run down gives us four layers of casting material that's that. Now, just going to wet my hands. Should I wash my scissors? Sorry? Should I wash my scissors? You can wash your scissors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now we're just going to mould this. So make sure we've got this in a nice standing angle. Just moulding the palm apart there so that it We'll make nice contact with the ground. I'm just checking that the toes are going to be okay and that the bandage isn't going to be digging into the top of those when we don't wait theirs. Don't use your fingers, don't pinch it in because then you'll create pressure points. So we're just using the flat of our fingers and the palm of our hand, just making sure that this is all in nice areas of contact. That's it really, You're just gonna let that go off now and cure. It hasn't got long, it's starting to warm up, so it's an exothermic reaction. You'll feel it start to warm up as it starts to cure. doesn't necessarily need to be covered, but I'll generally cover this now. A bit of that wrap. So we're just closing it in like that. Just trying to reduce the dog's access to the soft band or to that padded bandage. Because we don't want it to be grabbing at its teeth and 
pulling it out. The clear of overlap is not really important now for this layer. This layer is more important if you've split the cast and then you've put it back on with the, the woven bandage. It's not as important for a full cast. Nice and loose at the top. Got your scissors again. <laughs> Again, just to stop the dog having access to that padded bandage, I'll tend to tuck that in a little bit. Nearly there, and then the last thing I'll do, just to make the part, the, the tip of it a bit more hard wearing, it's just going to be weight bearing on this. Just add a couple of pieces of a sort of elastoplast style bandage. Like that. Just to stop that peeling and to neaten it off so it looks a bit smarter. Just a final wrap. Hmm. That's us. Awesome.